let's talk drugs. I mean, let's talk medicine. I mean, uh, let's talk plants. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a long time, and you can tell by the title and the thumbnail of everything, we're gonna be talking about psychedelics and more specifically, ayahuasca. Now, before we get into this, I wanna hedge this with a couple ideas. The first one being, I'm not a big user of substances. I'm a newbie in this regard. I don't smoke, I don't drink, but I do like psychedelics. I've done a little bit of mushrooms. I've dabbled in some mushrooms. This is my second time doing ayahuasca. I'll have all the timestamps below, so if you wanna follow along, you can kind of skip ahead to certain things, but I just i am coming from my second ayahuasca experience, and this time I actually brought a journal with me, so I wrote about my top takeaways, and just during the during the ceremony, like while things were hitting me, the, the different downloads and ideas, and so I'm really excited to go through some of this stuff with you guys. I'll be kind of going through it with you for the first time, but before we jump into that, I wanna to talk to you about the overview, why I choose to do ayahuasca. Two, I wanna to talk to you about what it's like. I'm not gonna give away all the secrets. I think there's kind of something special about the magic to it, but I'm not gonna pretend like I'm an expert in this regard. I understand how ludicrous some of the things that I'm going to talk about are in terms of like this very hippy dippy sense. I wanna just preface this by saying a lot of this is going to feel a little out there, but if you know, you know. I wanna to talk to you guys about does it work? After the last time I did it was a year ago and the difference between my last experience and this one, one the last one is Colombia, this one was in Brazil and kind of the differences between the two. And every experience is different also depending on your physical chemistry, on where you are in your headspace, all that sort of stuff. So this is one man's perspective, this is my experience. So let's jump into it. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is why I do them. I am on a quest to be the best version of myself that I can possibly be. In order to do that, there are different tools, I think, that help me see myself removed sometimes from my ego. And I think it's important to have some ego, obviously, but we're so close to ourselves and our thoughts all the time that there are certain tools, whether that's therapy, whether that's meditation, whether that's psychedelics, that helps you remove your perspective from your ego and from yourself. And to me, that's one of my main motivations is that I'm, I use this as a tool to kind of see myself first and foremost, to maybe see where I'm messing up, see where I can prove, improve. And I feel like Mother Ayahuasca often has some interesting suggestions in those regards. Another reason that I like to do this and dabble in psychedelics is that I find them very challenging. One, physically, it really is hard for me in terms of like my stomach, just because I'm a sensitive guy, so the stomach stuff and the physical journey itself is challenging, as well as the mental, emotional, spiritual piece. It's not easy, it's not fun. There's something about pushing yourself, challenging yourself that I find really important. I do this because I find it's a way that I can challenge myself and really push my comfort zone, and it's it helps me realize who's in control. And lastly, the, the last reason why I do this is because I feel like it helps me connect with this kind of human element that is very spiritual. There's the side of me that is very religious. I'd also say based in faith and spirituality and like the universe and the connectedness of humans. When I knew if I was gonna do it, I wanted to do it. I don't wanna say authentic or legit because it, it's not, that's not what it's about. But for me, I wanted to be kind of as close to the source of the shaman as possible. Both times I've done this have been in like a ceremonial space, like a space that's meant for these things. And so that's really powerful too, the setting itself. and you know, women and men that are part of these tribes are present and help lead the ceremony and just so that it feels very much like it's how I imagined myself doing it. The first one, I feel like I was being like bashed against the wall, like absolutely bludgeoned to get the lessons. Compared to this time, I feel like there were a lot of similar lessons, but it was more like a, like a stern reminder. I like to have control. I, I want to control my environment and I'm very disciplined and very structured and that doesn't mix well always with these sorts of experiences and you need to learn how to let go. It reminds me if you've ever seen Fight Club when Brad Pitt's talking to Edward Norton and he's like, just let go. And he's like, they're in the car and he just has to kind of like let the steering wheel go. I resonate so much with that movie because I feel like it explains so much of how I feel and, and who I am. Another one of the beautiful pieces of these ceremonies in my experience is the music. And the first ceremony when I did the one in Colombia, there was a lot, a ton of instruments. There were percussion, there were flutes, there were bells, triangles, guitars. There were these guys that were part of that ceremony, Colombian guys, and they would they were playing these like really fast 
intense ayahuasca songs. That's the only way that I can describe them. I never heard tempos, keys, lyrics like that before. They're like traditional songs. And it, it was a certain type of energy compared to this time, a lot of the music was done through chanting. I think the Yawanawa are like known for these kind of like chanting, singing songs. And so that was, was really interesting, really powerful and just really different. There was, at the very beginning, after everyone had drank, we all stood up around the circle and held hands and sang songs and kind of would walk around the circle and dance a little bit before we all kind of went off and had our separate journeys. And it was just really cool. There was this communal piece to the chanting and the singing that was rad. And then later they busted out the instruments, a lot of percussion, again, a couple guitars. So I'm really excited to talk to you about this because this time I have some really interesting takeaways that I wanna dive into with you. Okay, so the first, if you can see that, I don't know if you can see that. I'll take some footage. At the beginning is always the most challenging for me because I hate throwing up. It's hard for my body to like let go and throw up, but like the whole letting go thing is like something we're gonna talk, right? That's, that's what I, I keep, that's part of my whole thing is like, how do I let go? Just like, let it go. But I didn't throw up this time. And so, so I just said, I said, trust the medicine. That was the first one, grateful for Spencer. We were sitting next to each other. This happened also, this was about throwing up, I think, but also like kind of an important life lesson. This was, if it needs to happen, it will. There's also a piece about plant medicine that I find interesting with this stuff that is, it almost becomes like a competition in either like how much you drink or what tribe you've done it with. It's the same with yoga. Like when I lived in Bali and I was in Ubud, it was like yoga, it was like unless you studied with this person or you did this type of yoga, it feels, and I'm like the whole point is that it's not, you're, it's supposed to be like learning about yourself and letting go of ego, not like being better than other people with this sort of stuff. And so, there, there comes a point when people start drinking more, or we'll take another cup. And I said, I, I was like, I just, I wanted to just go with the one. And I said, Kian, nothing to prove but to yourself. Um, that's important to me. It was like, I'm in it for me. I'm not in it to try to prove that I can drink more than somebody else. I also, there's a woman that I met that night. She was really cool. And so we just chatted before someone, it was her first time. She was sitting up close to the fire. And so at one point I go and sat down next to her because she was having a hard time. At one point I just kind of put my hand on her shoulder to be like, hey, I got you. Didn't say anything, just put my hand on her shoulder. She looked over at me and it's just like, cool. And then later when I was having a hard time, she could tell I was going through it. She brought me a glass of water and I wrote in it together. And it just really, it meant a lot, especially when you're like in it and you're really, it's really, you're like hypersensitive to emotions and people and stuff. Like, like it was just cool to be like, you're, you're in it together. Another one I wrote, but as I was getting these downloads was I have the answers already inside, find them. Like you have, you know, you already know what you need, but it's wrapped up behind fear and insecurity and ego and all these other things that there are answers I think are often, um, it's hard to dig them out from behind all of that other BS, but we have them in us. That's why someone, a coach or a friend who can ask you, a therapist that can ask you good questions is priceless. Your energy is powerful. Share it. I wrote that to myself. I think that's, I find often just, I think being a white guy, so always kind of being the bad guy and also being a white guy who's been obsessed with, you know, black culture and black music for so long, just loving, wanting to be a rapper. You know, there's so much of me that feels guilt and shame around being a white man. And so I try to be small. I try to be smaller than I am. I often try to, I think, I'm really careful about, you know, giving space for other people. I think you can still be the evil white guy and also still be, have a positive impact. But um, I, I'm almost like, it's been so beaten into me for so long about um, appropriation and um, all of the bad things that, you know, my, uh, my people have done that it's just, um, it's hard for me to, I think, feel that confidence in myself sometimes. Again, if you've ever done any psychedelics, you know, it's really challenging. Like it comes in waves. And so at some point you're like, okay, I got this. And then other times you're like, I don't got this. And I said, it's supposed to be hard. Like the obstacle is the way, right? As Ryan um, Holiday would say, like the challenge is why you're doing it. So when it's really painful, like that's the point. I said, let the lessons come to you. Don't force it. You know, this, there will be parts I think later where I'll say, even on here I said, roll with it. Like it's sometimes you're, you're getting downloads and sometimes you're just kind of in the moment, but rather than like trying to really 
get like force it. Like sometimes you just gotta sit by the fire and just be present and and you know not not try to make it more than it is. Uh, this is a cool one. I said practice makes. Um, you probably can't read it, but it says practice makes perfect. And then I crossed perfect out and wrote better, just because at this point during the experience I was feeling a lot better. I was still physically very. I was having a hard time, but I just felt like I was. I was able to handle it so much better. And so it was like, you know, probably the more that I do this, the better I'll get at it. It will never be easy, but you just learn how to ride the wave a little better. I said, art matters. This was about the music. The music was really powerful. And I was, I saw some of the guys had this really elaborate kind of face paint on and it was just really cool. This is interesting. I could barely read what I'm saying. Everything becomes normal eventually. And again, this is adapting to this setting where it's so different than anything you've ever experienced before if you haven't done it yet. but. It starts to feel after a while like it's like oh this is like meant to be this is like the connecting to the humanist piece that like that it's hard to describe but it feels it starts to feel you feel like it's it starts to feel like oh like this is what it's supposed to be just the connection to other people and the music and the fire it's hard to describe but it feels um, it becomes it starts to feel normal even though coming from our Western world into that world it feels very strange for, at first there was a point when I was sitting next to the woman I was telling about Riley. And I really wanted to take her hand because she was having a hard time and I was struggling and so I wanted to just hold her hand. And I wrote, when push comes to shove, we want the same things we always have. And it's just, you wanna be loved, you want connection, you wanna feel, um, you know, you wanna feel connected to other people. We are everything. This comes back, I think, to the masculinity piece. Like, we all have a bunch of different dimensions to who we are, it's just, in what setting do you show them? I'll come back to this point later, but there was one woman who was dancing. She was probably in her 20s. She, she looked youthful. Um, she, there were some older women there, like probably in their 40s, maybe some 50s, but she was definitely like in her 20s. She had like 20 something energy, but she was, she was sexy. Like she had these cool tattoos and she had pants, like yoga pants, but they almost had like these like slits in them. You could see her thighs. She had this like kind of like bohemian, like it's like a shawl. And she was like dancing around the fire and like spinning around and it was just like very difficult to not stare at her and i was trying really hard not to be creepy and just like be focused on the fire but she would just she had this sexuality to her and it was just it was like in this i'm trying to have a spiritual experience i'm also just like so drawn to like the sexiness of this woman and i wrote the boy got <laughs> that boy got the devil in him and it's uh it was just true it's like and i wrote it later too i know i wrote it in here it's like Sex is powerful, man. Like, um, there's especially, I'm just like hypersensitive to it, especially when, you know, you're on the house, it's like, it's, it, you're connected to yourself in that dark side of sex, but also it's very primal and very real. Um, that boy got the devil in him. Ooh, this, I like this one. It's, I said, not about turning the brain on, it's about turning it off. And this is one of the biggest pieces, I think, the, of the ceremony that's difficult, is it's so cerebral, you're so much in your head, is it's like, how do you get, present how do you become present how do you how do you lean more into feeling the experience than trying to like think about it or analyze it while it's happening and it's this always always this balance of like having the experience and then like thinking of kia having the experience you know where you'd be like observing things and i'm like oh am i cool do i look cool am i okay like the same it's like the observer piece you know that it's like it's not about becoming more analytical necessarily in those moments how do you become almost like more in the moment and present. It's not about analyzing it more. It's about really feeling into it better, I think. Um, I have another one like that later that's like, kind of like this like uh, paradox piece. Thoughts matter. Toxic thoughts feel toxic. This is fascinating. This is one that I think is very true, but we just don't realize it as much in our day to day. Like I said, the medicine just makes you sensitive. We don't feel this, but like watching news, it's always bad shit, you know, like watching news or stuff about Trump coming back or like listening to like shitty things going on in the world that are out of your control, like, or thinking about people in a weird way, like your thoughts matter. Like if you start thinking about toxic shit, you'll feel it in your body and it might make you throw up. Like, it'll make you shit, it'll make you throw up. Like, there was a, a woman that I really liked in Colombia and she was just super cool. I felt like we really had a connection and I kind of botched it. Um, and I really think it could have been something special, but I've, have, I've had some, been hard on myself about that, that I didn't make that happen better. And that bitterness to myself felt 
very strong that felt toxic and it was just very apparent boom like in my body toxic thoughts feel toxic this is another kind of flip floppy one control isn't the point not having control is um meaning how do you roll with it especially you think with something like ayahuasca it's not how do you control the experience like how do you how are you able to master the feeling of not being in control and that's a bar like that's something that's not easy for me it's not over till it's over bitches it comes in waves there are times when i think i'm out of it and i almost have a little bit of an ego trip like oh dude i got this i'm so good at this look at me it's my second time i'm mr hotshot and then i'll come back and be like oh no actually you ain't out of this yet. Like it's an hour, it's like it takes four to six hours. So it's like, you'll have these periods where you're like, oh, I did it. And then you like fall back into it. You're like, oh no, here we go. And it's just, it's not over till it's over. Um, you know, don't get too big for your britches. You can be the man you wanna be. I talked about this before about like, you know, playing it small. And I think I have a lot of potential inside of me. I just, um, I'm almost scared of it probably. Um, also, don't want to be too big. Uh, there's a lot of round guilt, shame, white male shit in there, appropriation stuff that um, that's true, but I think I can be the man I want to be and still maneuver in a way that is positive for the world. Um, some lessons need to be learned again. That's just big facts. Some lessons need to be learned again. That's what I said. This was less of like a bludging and more of like a gentle, it, was a little, it wasn't like a gentle, it was a stern talking to. I'm proud of us. You know, I am because I was I was proud to be there to be doing something difficult, doing something challenging. It'll be what it needs to be. Again, I didn't throw up and I was wondering if that was a bad thing. And instead it just said, you know, I think this will just it'll be what it needs to be. You know, it'll whatever's supposed to happen is supposed to happen. And that's that. Don't try to make it more than it is. You know, this was the second cup stuff, you know, when people are starting to have other experiences. I was just, I was almost being, I was like feeling almost insecure. Like maybe I wasn't having enough of an experience because it wasn't more difficult. And I was like, Kia, this, it, this was the, the, the gentle, stern talking to you, you're supposed to have it. You don't have to have it bludgeon you every time. There's also a point when I, I, because I had more physical control over my body this time, I was able to actually partake in the music. I was able to start drumming at one point. And there was, I had just more control. And so I was able to play these bongos and stuff. And it was just so beautiful. You know, like I said, that sexy girl was dancing and people were dancing around the fire. And I was playing the bongos and the music. People, they bust out the guitars and the percussion. It was just beautiful. I said, don't try to seem smarter than you are. This was when I was playing the bongos and they, they were drummers were amazing. And like, I would try like little triplet runs and little things. And I was like, yeah, like, it, they don't really care if you're playing drums or not. Nobody really cares. So stop trying so hard just like play the bongos shittily and just like enjoy that everything or everyone deserves a second chance i'm really glad i gave this ayahuasca another shot because this was such a better experience this time and also i think that happens a lot with people is we kind of write people off maybe too quick before giving them a real second chance like i said here sex is power maybe spending a little bit too much time watching that sexy girl dance um no when to let others shine that was also with the drumming like you don't have to be the star player here just play your little bongos and enjoy it. And then the last one, this was kind of, this was, I guess, the reoccurring theme of the entire ceremony was around the masculinity stuff. I said, last one that I wrote here, I said, there's room for you, you know? This, I think, was inspired by the drumming piece. Like, there was like all this percussion and music, and it's like, you know, you don't really need to be participating here, but there's room for you, you know? Like, you can, you can, you can participate, you can be a part of this thing, and there's a space for you. And I feel that same way with the YouTube channel. I feel that same way in general in trying to embrace my king energy more. There's room for you. And so, yeah, those are my, those are my, my ayahuasca takeaways. A lot to digest there. Some cliched stuff in there. Some played out stuff in there. Some real powerful stuff in there too. Um, I'm glad I did it a second time. This might be something that I do like once a year. If you, I would not recommend doing this just for like a fun or an experience thing. Like if you really have something you wanna work on, work through, set some intentions, that's who I'd recommend it for. I'm not a doctor, I don't plan, pretend to be one on the internet. These can be really powerful, game-changing substances. So be careful. But 
for me at this point in my life, it has been helpful in giving me some guardrails, giving me some signage, some signposts, giving me some direction to, I feel like, being on the right path. And I think the fact it was a more gentle this time, I think, is a, a good sign. So thank you for tuning in, as always, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.